Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me, excited for what I'll call dessert, Monday Night Football. We had a full buffet Saturday, Sunday of exciting action, and we have a treat for us this evening. The Bills visit the Jets at MetLife Stadium. We saw a game at MetLife Stadium last night, and it was not very exciting. 40-0 by the Cowboys, not quite what I predicted in my Sunday breakdown. Um, the Giants offense looked a little stale. The Cowboys defense looked phenomenal, but that's okay. We're on to Monday. And also, I need a haircut, but I'm not getting one till I get 500 subscribers. We're sitting at 409. If you guys want to get me a fresh fade, look at this, boy. Look at this lettuce. We need a chop. So um, I'm kidding. I'll probably get one soon. But if you want to subscribe, that helps as well. So tonight we have the Buffalo Bills visiting the New York Jets, the new look Jets, as they should be called because of all of their offseason additions. And again, I think this will be the best game of all the 16 games played this weekend in the NFL. Let's take a look first at the promotions. It, it, finally, these books have put their promotions out now. Part of this is on me just waiting to the last minute to make this video. We got 12 hours till kickoff, and uh, I know that doesn't leave a lot of time for people to consume this media, but here we are with some promotions. The No Sweat Bet is still active for a Monday night bet on any wager in this game. We have a Monday night football up 10 early win, FanDuel's giving out a profit boost. They gave out a ton this weekend. Why not another one? And DraftKings also with a profit boost. So that is three promos just on DraftKings. Other books are a little slow. I'm sure we'll get some on other books as we get closer to lunchtime. Like I said earlier, this is in MetLife Stadium. We did see a rainy, disgusting night last night, but this will be a perfect night tonight. 74 degrees, no wind, a little humid. Um, they'll paint the field, they'll change it up, it'll be ready for the Jets, home opener against the Bills. Last season, the Bills were 13-3, and they lost to Cincinnati in the divisional round, they looked good, uh, Josh Allen is clearly the leader on this team, and they're clearly getting the job done with him. The Jets were 7-10, and not a great year, but I think that statistic is a bit irrelevant considering the offseason moves that they had. They did beat the Bills last season, though, in New York, so that bodes well for them Tonight, if you want to look at it in terms of a trend with how home field advantage may play a role in this series. Looking at their rosters, now both of these teams had significant roster turnover, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We'll start with the Bills. They draft Dalton Kincaid and, you know, confused a lot of people, including me. I thought Dawson Knox was um, a considerable weapon for this team, but it seems like they want to play more two offensive tight end sets. So Kincaid fits that perfectly. I think it'll be a great weapon for Josh Allen this season. Damian Harris comes over from the Patriots. Latavius Murray comes over from the Saints. I do believe I could be wrong. I should have checked. And Deontay Hardy, also a receiver that comes over for the Saints. If anything, I think the Bills lose a little firepower at the receiver position. I know Isaiah McKenzie was not um, necessarily a huge contributor, but I think he spaces out the defense a little bit. And so losing him, uh, you know, they still have Diggs. They still have Gabe Davis. But we'll see how Deontay Hardy fits into this. I know Khalil Shakur played a good role at the end of the season, so maybe he'll step in as wide receiver three. But right now, Hardy is listed at wide receiver three. As for the Jets, we all know that they have had a considerable amount of offensive firepower gained. They add Randall Cobb, a little old, but we'll talk about his veteran experience in a bit. McCole Hardman comes over from the Chiefs. Alan Lazard comes over from the Packers. Obviously, they add Aaron Rodgers, which was their biggest addition, and they pick up Dalvin Cook, um, you know, less than a month ago uh, to pair with Brees Hall in the backfield. Now, I do want to talk about Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. While some people may not think that their athletic prowess is going to contribute to this team, the fact that Aaron Rodgers gets to come in onto a team with two receivers in the wide receiver room that he already has played years with, plural, is a massive, massive advantage. These receivers, whether it's on the field or off, have chemistry with Aaron Rodgers. Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb are able to work with Garrett Wilson and say, hey, we've worked with your quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Here's what he likes to do in these situations. Here's how you can better suit him in this situation. Here's how this route can be ran on this play so that you have a better time connecting with him. It can't be understated. 
I think people are looking at the names Cobb and Lazard and saying, eh, right? Cobb's old, Lazard, he's had some rough years. It, it can't be looked at like that. It has to be seen as a full encompassing view of not just playing, but also coach that coaching uh, mentorship element. So I think this is a massive thing for the Jets offense. There were two pretty sizable coaching changes this offseason. Leslie Frazier has been the defensive coordinator for, I believe, three to five years with the Bills, and he is taking the year off. Now, in his time, they've had a defense. And I just copied this from the Bills website. I just want to to talk about how successful Leslie Leslie Frazier has been as a defensive coordinator. Since 2017, the Bills have allowed an average of 20 points per game, third in the NFL. Yards per game, first allowed. Passing yards, first. Passing touchdowns, first. 99 interceptions, second. 158 turnovers, second. Dominant. Their defense has been dominant. Now, you could argue eight of their games have been played against Miami, New York, and the Patriots, which in the last five years, none of those teams have really been fantastic. So maybe slightly skewed, but I think Leslie Frazier's absence is going to be a big talking point as we get deeper into the season. I think we're going to see the Bills' defense struggle, and I don't think this matchup with the Jets is a good first game for them. And I'll bring you over here to the Jets. The Jets add Nathaniel Hackett as the offensive coordinator. Now, if you're like me, you're sitting here thinking, Nathaniel Hackett, you mean the Broncos coach? You mean the guy who just got fired last season because of how poorly he coached, managed Russell Wilson and that team? So what is he going to do with Aaron Rodgers? Well, I'll tell you. Nathaniel Hackett was the Packers offensive coordinator, worked with Rodgers from 2019 to 2021. Was he cut out for a head coaching job in Denver? No, clearly not. But is he cut out for stepping into a Robert Sala coached team as an offensive coordinator with a Hall of Fame quarterback that he has three years experience with? Boy, howdy. I'm telling you right now, we may see a resurgence of this old man Aaron Rodgers this year. So be on the lookout for that. I think this pairing is considerable, especially for tonight's matchup. I know we're in week one, but I, I I don't think this bodes well for the Bills. Looking at the numbers for this game, the Jets open at home as a slight underdog, plus 110 on the money line. They are a two to one and a half point dog. Most books are sitting at two right now. MGM and one other book has uh, moved to one and a half. Uh, I can see this going to one and a half by kickoff, so be careful there. If you want the two, take it early. Um, And the over and under set at 45 and a half, which I think is a little low. I think this game touches 50 fairly easily. Now, you'll see my official plays in a second. I don't have a bet on the over, but if I had to pick over or under tonight, I'm going over. And I know the primetime games go under. Divisional rivals go under. I get that the trends are not in my favor, but I like the over tonight. Lastly, let's talk about some bets I like. Look, guys, I'm, I am I, I told you this. I'm not a handicapper. All right, I'm creating this content for entertainment. Now, I've had success betting in the last two years. Again, I'll stress it. I play promos, okay? I'm 0-7 right now. Marvin Jones let us down the first night. We put all our eggs in Marvin Jones' basket, and he sat on them, cracked them, shells everywhere, yolk everywhere. It was a mess. Last night, we put all our eggs in the Giants' basket, and Micah Parsons in that Cowboys defense made an omelet out of Daniel Jones and Isaiah Hodgins. Now, Hodgins was close to cashing for us. Jones had opportunities. It was rainy. It was messy. So that's on me. We are down five units. We haven't won a bat in prime time. So if you want to turn this video off right now, do I blame you? No. But I'm going to win eventually. And again, we'll be fine. So a couple things here. I want to talk about these big, big bets right here, and then we'll talk about this. Um, These are the bets that I would play straight, and I would play for a full unit. I think, like I said, with Nathaniel Hackett, with Leslie Frazier gone, with a home Monday night primetime game, with Jordan Love balling out yesterday for the Packers and people talking about they don't need Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers takes that stuff personally. He may act like he doesn't, but he cares about that stuff. 
he, I don't, I don't, people will call him arrogant. I don't want to say that. I just think the dude knows what's expected of him and knows when to show up. And I think tonight he shows up. So give me the over 234 and a half on his passing yards. Give me the over 21 and a half completions. I think they'll get him started early. I think they'll do short intermediate routes to Lazard, maybe to Cobb, to Garrett Wilson. Give me over one and a half touchdowns at plus money, plus 115. I think that is probably the best bet on this card. And give me the Jets money line at plus 110. So these are all the bets that I would play straight for a full unit. Now, as we talked about, FanDuel has a profit boost. I've already locked it in. And here's what I'm locking in. And it is a version of this, all right? So I realize I'm kind of doubling up here, and that's fine. Okay, all of these are official plays, all four straights. And then this um, promotion will be tracked as official plays. We're taking the Jets money line. We're taking Rodgers over yards, over touchdowns, and we're taking Alan Lazar to score any time. I'm doing this because I think Garrett Wilson sees a lot of attention tonight from this defense. He's their biggest weapon. So I think, especially in the red zone, we're going to see uh, man coverage on um, Garrett Wilson. And I think that the answer to that for Aaron Rodgers is to find his red zone favorite from the Green Bay Packers, Alan Lazard. So that is what we're locking in. Now look, guys, if 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 we hit hit that parlay, we're back to positive. Okay. So again, utilize these boosts. I have it crossed out here, but this was plus nine hundred before this this boost. So that is why these boosts are so important. I am gaining an extra fifty dollars on this play that I wouldn't get. Okay, so if if ten dollars is my standard units, that's a five unit increase. That is how I make money doing this. Okay, you're gonna see a lot of people on TikTok and YouTube trying to give you their picks. We'll talk about that another time. But they they rarely talk about these boosts and these promos, and that is again the best way to make money. And I will beat a dead horse until the horse has disintegrated. Um, so that is that tonight. Enjoy the game, guys. As always, if you want to subscribe, it helps me out. If you want to follow my other um, modes of media presentation, that'll help me out. Take care, and we will see you next time on the channel.